Welcome to the Real Film Nerds Podcast. Welcome, 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 everyone, to the Real Film Nerds Podcast, episode number 268, Mike's Son is Potty Trained. It's a weird title of a movie, Mike, but I'm sure that's what we'll be talking about most of this podcast. So for those of you who tuned in to talk about a movie called The Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, it's not going to happen because we're just going to talk about poops and peas and Mike's son running around. Crazy. Dude, I don't I don't know if that's true. And I wouldn't say he's potty trained. I'd say he's potty training. Sounds like he's not a very good trainee. Well, it takes time, man. It takes time. You got to build it up. If it takes time, Mike, then he needs to eat more fiber. Well, yeah. He probably does need to eat more fiber. Too much cap and crunch. Yes, Cheerios. Too many Cheerios. Cheerios? You don't even give them the good cereal? Man, you are a cruel bastard. No, man. He's two. He's not five. Oh, okay. At five is when they get the good cereal because they can appreciate the toy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Dude, do That's they it. even put toys in cereal anymore? I'm not sure. They they, they probably don't. Okay. They're taking everything else away. Before we know it, we're going to pay 7 or $8 for the individual boxes of cereal, and that's all it'll be? Yes. 100%. Inflation is a bitch. So anyways, all right, back on topic. Mike, everything, everywhere, all at once. Go ahead. Give us a rundown. Ready, set, go. Okay, Matt. So everything, everywhere, all at once. This movie is directed by... Uh, Dan Kwan and Daniel uh, Schoenart. And it was written by Dan Kwan and uh, Daniel Schoenart. And it's starring Michelle Yao, Stephanie Su, Kei Hao Kwan, and James Hong. And uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. And this movie is about an aging Chinese immigrant is swept up in an insane adventure where she alone can save the world by exploring other universes connected with the lives she could have led. Well, okay, Mike. As we go, we usually start out with our first impressions of said film. I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. Uh, Yeah, I... I really liked it, man. I thought it was very original and uh, kind of crazy. And uh, I'm going to rip this off from my coworker. He described it as a Matrix, Bill and Ted's um, meets Jackie Chan movie. Okay. All right. In a lot of ways. Uh, I think it was more of uh, Rick and Morty on steroids. Okay. All right. Because it's a very, very unique uh, multiverse. Uh, I like how they do a lot of the uh, concepts of it where you can tap into the other universes and learn their abilities of your other self of those universes. I thought that was pretty freaking ingenious. I like that even though this movie is a little bit lower budget, it still just works great how they you know, show the transitions and the different things and they kept the same characters, but they just kept playing different parts. I I really thought that was cool. Yeah, I think it was uh, a mid-budget film. It wasn't really low budget. It's on the brink of being an independent. But uh, I, I thought it was very well done. It was very ingenious, the story, uh, how they told the story. The acting was very, very good, especially from... Um, uh stephanie uh sue i believe is how you pronounce her last name uh she played joy i thought she was really really fantastic uh of course michelle yo did a fantastic job she always does and it was really nice to see ki hu kwan or is it ki wei kwan i think it's ki wei kwan i'm not sure matt back in the limelight mike yeah yeah this is short round short round from uh Indiana Jones, uh, it's also, he's also from, from Goonies. So there's a gap in his acting. He was in Encino Man in 1992, 
And then he doesn't do anything again until 2002. And then he has a couple more movies, which one of them is Everything Everywhere All at Once. And I have to say, I was really impressed because I really do think he was the one doing the martial arts. Yeah, no, I I think he did. Yeah, I think he did it. And dude, I honestly, that was on the level of Jack, Jackie Chan, especially that first fight with the uh, uh, fanny pack. Oh my God, that was so hilarious. Dude, the fanny pack scene is so awesome. And it that's I think that's the biggest, almost like homage to Jackie Chan. I thought that was great, man. Uh, it was It was so good. It was so good. It was so much fun. Yeah, th- this movie, um, it's you know, it's it's running time is two hours and nineteen minutes, but it doesn't feel like that. It was it was great to watch this movie. It just it was really neat. Um, I felt it was it had good pacing and it was just it was fun. Uh, I don't know. I would say it kind of dragged in some spots, but not like a lot. Um, I think I was more the title scenes or title cards that kept popping up. I kept wanting to anticipate when the next one was going to come because the first section, so it's broken up into three sections, uh, the title of the movie, there's everything, and then there's everywhere, and then there's all at once is how they break it up. And everything was 90% of the movie. The other two were not. So I was like, oh, when the second one came, I was like, oh, my God, is this going to be like another hour? (laughs) Then it was like quick and wham, bam and kind of done. But uh, maybe that's what just made it feel long just because how long that first section was. So I think maybe taking the title cards out would help. I I don't know. I don't know. It just I think it subconsciously made me feel like it was a long movie. Okay. All right. Well, I I didn't feel like it was long and. Um, it was also interesting to see, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis's character. I didn't think she was going to have much like that. She was just going to be kind of a small role, but she actually had fairly major role and I loved her character. Yeah. Her being an IRS auditor. Yes. Um, I mean, we'll get into it in the spoilers, Matt, but, uh, her medal, her medal was the best. Her medal. Or you mean her trophies? Yes, her trophy. Yes, her trophies, yeah, trophy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, all right, all right. Fine, Mike. Well, to get into other things, uh, you need to do your job. Ah, yes, that's true, Matt. So uh, with that, Matt, I think I'll ask you, uh, what are you drinking this fine morning, evening, afternoon? <sighs> Thanks, Michael. As always, I'm drinking this week local Prescott Brewing Company's Liquid Amber. Well, that's nice, dude. That's nice. Uh, Yeah, I've had them before here on the show, and they are wonderful, and it's always nice to support local. Got to keep our local companies going because they're the ones struggling with everything, too. All right, Mike, what IPA are you sitting there reading the label for? All right, Matt, it is another IPA, and it is Leinenkugel's Lemon Haze IPA. Is it lemony and hazy? It is lemony and uh, hazy, yes. So that means it's like a a yellow pea color that's hazy. Yeah, so it's just like my normal pea. They, you're just skipping, like, you might as well just pour it in the glass and walk over and pour it in the toilet. Oh, yeah. That's skip the right. processing. Yeah, yeah, skip the processing. <laughs> that's what I would do with an IPA. <laughs> Right, right. Well, you know, maybe I won't do that this time, Matt, but next time. I know. I know you like your IPAs. I know. Okay, Mike, so the most boring, terrible, awful part of the Real Film Nerds podcast, Mike, how terrible is this week's dad joke? I got dad jokes. I don't think they understand, though. Gotta think I'm funny. Other people never laugh, though. Dad jokes. Oh, Matt, it's a great one. They're always a great one, you know? There's... Oh, there's there's so many there's so many so let, let's you better be prepared damn it i see you stalling uh how do lumberjacks know how many trees they've cut they look behind them they keep a log they keep a log oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> okay fine all right good we'll go with that you keep a log 
Perfect. Okay, Mike, now the real meat and potatoes of the Real Film Nerds podcast, episode number 268. Mike, how does everything, everywhere, all at once, easily relate to the Marvel Cinematic Universe? So I was thrilled, Matt, when I was watching the credits uh, uh, in the opening scene of this movie because I saw Anthony and Joe Russo as the producers. And I was like, sweet, because, you know, they did uh, Captain America Winter Soldier and they did the Avengers Endgame and the Avengers Infinity War. So I was like, yes. And they also did uh, Civil War, Captain America Civil War. Like, it's even easier than that. Who's who? 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 Michelle Yeoh, our lead actress, oh yeah, she was is in, in Shang Chi. Oh yeah, man, and the of Legend of the Ten Rings. I gotta yeah. get the rest of it in there, but yeah. Oh, jeez, damn it, Mike, dude, so many characters. It's just, it's, it's, but and then um, um, Joy, played by Stephanie Sue, I'm pretty sure it's Sue, was also in Shang Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Oh man, no, all right. Okay, totally, totally missed that, Matt. Totally. I mean, you really, you really just dropped the ball, Mike. You, you just really did. Well, just I just, I just that. saw the producers of the Russo brothers, I know, and I was I like, know. boom. It was pretty cool to see their name on it, though. I mean, it, it really was. And then let's see. I, I swear, I, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure he was in there. Um, he's done a lot. I love, I love him so much. James Hong, we talked about him and being in big trouble in Little China. Yes, yeah, oh yeah, that one of our favorite movies. This kind of had like a big trouble Little China vibe to it a little bit. It did, it did. Um, yes, okay, I am right, I am right. So he was in an episode of the Agents of Shield in 2015. So there's three Marvel Cinematic Universe tie-ins, Mike, <laughs> on top of the Russo brothers. Nice man. Yeah, so easy. That's good. That's good, man. You you know, a lot of times it's not easy. That's what she said? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, then uh, we'll keep pressing along, Mike. We are in our spoiler section of RFN Podcast 268. Uh, Go ahead. Since I already spoiled some of it, you go for it. All right, man. So I just want to do... Well, I mean, there's a lot that I could talk about in this movie, but as a spoiler, I just want to just, I I have a hard time not talking about it, Matt. The hot dog fingers were so great. Uh, See, I should have looked that up because I'm pretty sure I'm not 100%. I wanted to look it up. I should have done it before the podcast, but I didn't. I'm pretty sure the hot dog fingers multiverse is a call out to a Rick and Morty universe. I'm pretty sure. But I'm not a hundred percent. Listeners, write in and let us know and put set me straight. Okay, we'll do that. It was hilarious, dude. I and like it, you know, they could have had just a few scenes, but like it just kept coming back up and it was so funny each time. Like just more stuff, like playing the piano with their feet. Like it was just I loved it. Oh, it was so fun. Uh what about the uh the romantic scene in the movie that was playing on the TV in the different multiverses. Uh, it looked like it was supposed to be like Anna and the King or something like that, but it's not. I mean, she's a well-known, not a well-known actress, but she's an actress that's been in like glow and a couple other things that was in the movie. Um, they were uh, doing that romantic scene and it was the same scene in every single universe, except for the hot dog fingers and the hot dog fingers. If you looked Mike, they had ketchup and mustard on their fingers and they were licking it off of each other's fingers. That was so <laughs> <laughs> it was just, it was just weird, man. That was just really weird. Dude. I loved it. I loved it. It was, it was so, so different, dude. Like this movie, um, I don't know. It, it, it just, it has like a, a unique style and it was fun. Like I even loved, uh, I don't know if I should give this away. I, I probably won't. Um, you can do whatever you want, Mike. The, the googly eyes. Like, the googly uh, eyes. Oh, that was the, so like, cool. 
he, he just like randomly put on googly eyes and like bags of like uh, finished laundry or whatever. Well, he put them all over the place, and I think that was just a a call out to his character that he was just no matter how shitty and how bad things were, um, Waymond Wong or Waymond Wing, uh, just always saw the the good in the world and the good in life, even though it was bad and it wasn't good, and they were being audited, and he still put googly eyes on stuff on the washing machine and on the laundry bags and you know all over the place he just he just didn't let shit get to him i guess is a good way to put it yeah uh so that that was fun i mean there's a lot of fun things in this matt the uh the everything bagel as like a major thing in the movie was well, that's a discussion we need to have mike that is a major discussion we need to have what do you think that everything bagel represents? I'm not sure, man. Like it's it's hard to know. It it, it was I don't know, like is it a is it all of the universes on t- I I don't know, man. I have no idea. I see it as a black hole. A representation of a black hole that anything that and everything that goes towards it gets sucked into it and becomes part of the everything bagel. That's my perception of it. You could be right, Matt. I don't know, but I like that I didn't know, and it was fun. Well, it's it was... hilarious because it's the literally the everything bagel, like everything. Yeah, um, I liked. Uh, you know how they use the light like underneath them like they just had like a a, like a spotlight on them and just like moved it around to like signify that they were like going between the dimensions or whatever i i liked how they did that you know when they just shined a like different color lights on their faces okay okay i know what you're talking about yeah 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 sure i I just i I thought that was cool and i you know that's not expensive that's not crazy like that was just easy okay all right so um let's see what else should we talk about i just okay so i i guess i should throw it out here so my mom and dad watch this film like they always do now with the radio and everything and they have the exact opposite reaction we do to this film mike they thought it was terrible worst movie they've ever seen on on ever ever my mom gave it negative cookies if that's possible wow Wow, I I don't know. Okay, all right, that's that's okay. And it you, was you know how much my dad and I talk, right? I didn't think you guys talk at all. Exactly. When he got out of the movie, he called me in the car on the way home and said, "Why did you make me watch the worst movie of my entire life?" Wow, wow, those are th- that's that's pretty heavy, dude. It's so heavy. here's the question. Do you feel that it's a generational thing? I don't know, Matt, but now I'm questioning that. I don't, I don't know. I'm trying to think of what my parents would think, and, you know, they probably hate it as well. I think it's a generational thing. I don't think it's so much that they hated the movie. I think they're turning their misconception of what the movie is about into hate. I don't think they understand what was going on and what was being presented in front of them, because I don't know how well they know the multiverse and going in and out of the multiverse i mean you have to admit this is very very sci-fi yes it's it's big time sci-fi so i don't know i mean i i'm just shocked because we'll get to our reels here shortly but i you know i personally think this is one of the most creative artistic uh well shot well acted films i've seen in my life it is very artistic and i really hope that the academy doesn't forget about this movie being that it's you know it's only uh april and it came out but it's so good there's so many neat things that they did in it and it, it, you can tell it was so much fun like oh the um i didn't even talk about it raccoonie oh yeah <laughs> Dude, there's so many funny, like weird. I, I, I loved it. I just love the different takes on different stuff. Like they touched on all kinds of stuff. But I think in the end, the movie's just about 
family. Oh, like of course. Yeah, that's exactly what I told my mom. I'm like, when they are done with it, I, I told them I, it's, it's about a lot more than just all these multiverses. It's more about dealing with life, um, your perceptions on life, um, getting with closer with your family, dealing with your family when good and bad, you know, that's what, that's what I felt it was about. Sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt Mike. I'm sorry. No, uh, no, that's fine. I I feel like that's what it's about, but it, it had so many funny things along the way. Like the IRS trophy. Oh man. I, I really want to see an IRS agent watch this movie and be like, Oh, what the fuck is that? Cause it was hilarious on our side of things because it, you know, it looked just like an anal plug. And yeah. I was like, yep. Cause that's what the IRS does. They give it to you. Yep. It's a butt plug. And then to reinforce the idea of it being a butt plug, that whole scene where they're trying to like literally fly through the air with no pants on trying to launch themselves onto said butt plug was hilarious and i think it's funny that they blurred it all out i mean i'm sure you're disappointed because you didn't get to see any you know flaccid penises but still you know what was going on like that that butt plug was going in somewhere yeah no i i thought the butt plug scenes or scene was so funny like there's the the fighting in this movie was good too man like it was it was well choreographed like it was awesome like i i don't know they there's a lot there's a lot of different pieces of this movie that if you take it just by watching the piece it would never make sense but as a whole it it it's actually really well put together and great all right mike well i don't know i don't know what else to add about it cuz i mean it's it's a good movie i mean i just it's interesting because how all the multiverses are running at the same time, going through similar situations, and how they're all kind of towards the end. You see, they're all bouncing back and forth, so you can interpret um, Joy Wang being the big bad because she's a teenager, and it's just that's how it manifested itself in the other multiverse. But yet, you see it in the other in the normal multiverse that we're introduced to at the beginning and. It's just interesting. And then how, you know, the divorce was like a big deal for um, uh, Wayman to present to his wife and it finally happens. And that's what ends up not so much resolving, but helping a lot with the IRS thing. And it's just, but yeah, I don't know if the divorce happened because you see towards the end of the film, uh, uh, Evelyn Wang kisses her husband. So right. maybe yeah. not. No, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Maybe it everything was... that happened repaired all of those relationships, you know. And then uh, Gong Gong, oh god, dude, I love that name, Gong Gong, played by James Hong, you know, the grandpa. Oh, dude, the grandpa scene when he when he like uh, the fight scene. Oh my god, so good, so good. Uh, I love how later on, you know, we meet the Alpha Gong Gong with the decked out wheelchair and all the badass shit. The, that's so good. But um, even then, you know, the relationship between his granddaughter being, you know, uh, a lesbian, even that was repaired by her just owning up to it and just saying this is what's going on. So maybe another lesson other than family is the most important thing is just being truthful to those that you care the most about and not hiding shit. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know. I felt like... The movie was uh, was a very interesting way of of presenting uh, dealing with family things and and in these characters and and all the stuff. Like I, I don't know. It was it was so unique and so different. I really hope that more people see this. I think it's doing quite well in the theater. Uh, like I think this movie's got legs. Well, I had a real hard time going and seeing this movie, getting the time out of my insane schedule the past few days. I saw it on Sunday night. The last showing, it was at 6.20 on a Sunday night. It was in one of the smaller theaters at Harkins because it had been taken out of the other theater. 
and I walk in literally as the uh, last trailer is going, and I turn around, and there's at least 40 or 50 people in the small theater. And you know that's almost at capacity for the small theater at a Harkins. Wow. So that's saying something on a Sunday night. Now, granted, just about everyone in there was of the younger generation. There wasn't our bread and butter that lives here in Prescott. It wasn't our retirees. It was high school kids, college kids, Ember Riddle kids, me, you know. But I, I, I'm I, just kind of shocked that this film isn't out more here, but it just probably is the demographics. I'm sure it has been doing great everywhere. Well, you remember, Mike, when it came out, I told you I wanted to see it, and we didn't get it here. And then all of a sudden, the next week, we got it. So clearly, everybody's like, oh my god, this is gangbusters. We need to put this in our theaters. It's um, I think they had a little bit of a limited release at first as well, Matt. And then this is uh, A24, who has a deal, I think, with Prime. Yeah, I'm, so this will probably, yeah, this will probably be on Prime fairly shortly. But anyway, um, I think it kind of had a slow release, like like it wasn't all like national right away. Yeah, I was talking with Lisa, the uh, the host of the radio show, that she wants to watch it. I really would love to see her take on it because she's like, she's like, Matt, I've never seen you and your mom be so separated. Like she hated it and you loved it. That she's like, that's so crazy. You guys have never done that before. I'm like, yeah. And so she really wants to watch this movie. She doesn't have time to go to the theater. She's usually sleeping when she should be at the theaters, you know, because she gets up at three in the morning. Morning shows, yeah. you know? Yeah, morning shows. You got to be there early, man. Right, right. And so she really wants to see it. And I had the discussion. I'm like, well, I know Amazon had a deal with A24. I don't know if they still do, but I anticipate this being on Amazon Prime if they still have that deal in the next month or two, just because it's so good. It It's just killing. It really is. I, I don't buy a lot of movies on Blu-ray anymore. Uh, this one, this one might be a buy for me when it comes out. Yeah, it was man it was cool and it was even fun like jamie lee curtis's character like like i said i didn't even think she was in it and then she was actually really in it and her character was a really cool character and it like changed throughout the movie and that was fun well mike i don't want to you know get too off topic here but this sets the bar very high for a movie that we're going to be seeing here in a week or two very high Oh yeah! Oh yes, the uh, it's coming out May six, yeah, Mike. Yeah, Do- Doctor Strange and and the uh, madness of the multiverse, multiverse multi- of madness. Yep, multiverse. Let's madness, see yeah. if they do as good with their multiverse as they did with this one, because this, Ooh. I mean, this is this is a very high bar. It is a high bar. Now the Spider Man was really good. That was really good multiverse. But I still think this was on another level. I agree, Matt. This was on another level. And it it was interesting to see the different characters. Oh, that was another thing I loved about the movie of how they like had to do something odd and funky to like spawn the ability to jump to the different characters. Yeah, the ability to to get the powers from the other multiverses. Yeah, well that's where the that's where the IRS trophy butt plug came from. Yeah, and the um the eating of like the chapstick oh just god like, dude no, that caught me so off guard i was like god that's gross but then later on they explain that you have to do this weird shit that makes no sense that no one would ever do to be able to get the power yeah and it's funny because everyone just does all this weird stuff it's it's really interesting i i, I like that it was quirky it's fun no it was fun yeah it was very unique and you know this movie is zany it's very zany that's a wonderful word for this film but i think it works well because you can do that kind of crazy shit with a multiverse film because the multiverse i've tried to explain it to you know members of my family i, I mean my mom of course but um the multiverse is literally anything and everything you can think of is a multiverse. Like I use Rick and Morty as an example. There's a Rick and Morty episode where literally people are furniture and the furniture are people. Like that's a multiverse. You can do it in that crazy ass world, you know? Yeah. The, the, uh, I don't think I'll, I'll bring this scene up too much, but the the scene where there's two inanimate objects that are subtitled, I thought it was very funny. Dude, that was ingenious. That was really, really good. 
So, okay, Mike, well, let's go ahead. Let's do this thing. I know how many reels I'm giving. I want to know how many reels you're giving. All right, Matt. I don't give this out very lightly. I'm giving out five reels. Of course you do, Mike. Of course you do. Well, I don't give it five. I'm damn That's close, good. though. I want to give it five. I really do. But I can't get over the pure and simple fact that the older generation didn't get it. Can't handle this movie. So that drops at a half a reel. I'm at four and a half. Okay, man. That's that's fine. That's fine. But I, I, you know, I, I leave fives very reserved because fives, I believe anyone and everyone should see this film. I think anyone and everyone should see this film except for the older generation that is not going to understand it. And that's why I dropped it half a reel. Okay. But All right. This movie's perfect, man. I love it. I really do. I, I would I want to give it a five, but I mean, literally, my mom, of all people, I, I've never heard her slam a movie so bad in my life. Wow, man. Wow. Stay tuned for that interview at the end of this podcast, by the way. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I'm 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 gonna uh I, I will be listening as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. So all right, Mike, next week. All right, next week. We are going to be doing this. I always forget the title, Matt. So oh, I got just, you right here. Okay. The all right. Unbearable so, Weight of Massive Talent. So <laughs> I'm not sure whose pick it is on the film because both of us have wanted to see everything everywhere all at once. Both of us really want to see The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent. And if you can't tell, the film after that, because we'll be back on the um, rotation of new films coming out because this movie's been out for a week. Uh, will be the new Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We have to. I mean, it's MCU, you know? I guess someday we probably should... If if Marvel Cinematic Movies start going to shit, then we'll probably stop watching them like the week they come out. But so far, they're still plugging along pretty goddamn good. They are. They are, Matt. They are. They're just cranking them out. So we're off to our next one. This one looks absolutely fantastic. Nicolas Cage playing Nicolas Cage opposite pedro pascal you fucking kidding me this is gonna be awesome it's gonna be great it's gonna be great man it's gonna be interesting to see and you know uh mags was telling me and we, we we should do this both of us should do this is we need to watch it through an eyes of not what nicholas cage has been doing and just watch it as fresh like just you know take away some of the criticism of all the different movies he just keeps cranking out and stuff and just look at it as like a fresh new look like unopinionated let's just let him wow us here's the thing though mike and my mom has already watched this movie she's already talked to me a little bit about it i told her not to but she did anyways the one thing where you and i better than probably just about anyone else not everyone in the world, but a lot of people is there are a shit ton of references to Nicolas Cage movies in this film. And so I'm interested to see how many of them you and I get. Cause my mom even said she got several, like, I guess there's some in there about Con Air and the rock and stuff. And my mom got those. And I'm like, Oh, if my mom got them, then they're blatant. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to see Matt, but Let's try not to, I don't know, go in there with like some sort of weighted view of, you know, because he's been making all those movies. Yeah, he, he's made a lot of crap just for the money. Don't get me wrong. I've watched a lot of it. I love Nicolas Cage. I think he's a great actor. He's crazy, but he's a great actor. I love that he's a comic book enthusiast. I love that about him. I love that he lost so much money on comic books and got him stolen and all this other shit. I just, I love it. Um. I watch a lot of his movies, Mike, that we have not reviewed or talked about. Um, I watched uh, Pig recently. I don't know if you've seen Pig. It's on Hulu. Oh, I, I heard it was, uh, uh, well, I heard about it. It was very good. Very, very, very good. It should have been nominated for something. And he did a fantastic job in that. But yet, on the flip side, I watched a movie that's, I think it's on Hulu or Netflix or Prime or something now. I told you about this. We've talked about it before. It's called like Wally something Wonderland or something. Oh yeah. They it's such a low budget movie. They didn't even have enough money to pay Nicolas Cage to say one word. And he doesn't say one word through the 
entire film, and he still does a great job. It's the movie <laughs> itself is shit, but his acting was fantastic. It was hilarious. All right, man. So I I think we're in for a treat then. I, I'm excited uh, for this movie. I really am. And Mike, who else could do this movie, and and have fun with it? Do you really think? most Hollywood actors would be like, yeah, sure. I'll do a movie that literally makes fun of me. Like the title makes fun of it. Yeah. I don't know if there's a lot that would be able to do this. I'm sure there's a couple, but yeah, yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a very short list. I'm bet you Sam, Sam Jackson would though. I was, I was having this conversation with my wife, Max. Yeah. We were talking about, I was like, you know, who does a ton of movies as well? Sam Jackson. Well, I mean, the, they do call Nicolas Cage the white Sam Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> He's done like, I don't know, since the 90s to now, Matt, I, I can't even like, it's like hundreds of movies. It's nuts. Um, So he got an Academy Award this year. Um, It was done at the uh dinner or award ceremony before the Academy Awards. It was the uh, lifetime achievement kind of thing. And Samuel L. Jackson got it. Because he's never gotten an Academy Award one, which is really astonishing. And they even said that we're presenting the award and everything. But they, they say how many movies he's been in, and it's been over five or 600 or something crazy like that. I don't remember the number, but it's a shit ton. Because the dude is, I think he's in his 70s now, and he's not stopping. No, he's working all the time, man. I think he just goes from set to set to set. I'm, I don't like. He might not even know where he lives. He might even forgot. He, he might just be like, "Well, I don't know where I'm at. I'll just buy another house." I don't know, but he works a lot. He really does. Uh, he's he's in so many movies. I love Sam Jackson, man. He is he is awesome. I, I bet you he might be an asshole to hang out with, but I bet you he's a really cool guy at the same time. I don't, I don't think he would be an asshole. I think he's a pretty, I think he's, uh, I don't know. Sometimes I think he plays himself. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I haven't hung out with many actors. I've, I've hung out with a couple, uh, you know, big nationwide actors and not for long, a couple hours, like David Carradine. I hung out with him for a couple hours. And when I was in New Mexico, that was weird. That dude was very down to earth. Oh man. You hung out with the Kung Fu guy, and then, then he died by autoerotic asphyxiation? Yeah, that was literally a year after I hung out with him for a couple hours. Yeah, there, so it's it's not that long of a story. But when I was in New Mexico working on the newspaper, this small town has this film festival. I don't know how the hell they got him to come out there. I mean, it's literally a town of less than like 3,000 people. And they have this film festival, and some Hollywood people came out. And they did the couple years I was there and covered it. And Carradine showed up and... You know, he was just this chill dude. He had his little personal assistant guy. And I was like, yeah, I'm just here to take pictures. They interviewed him. And he's like, ah, let's just wait for this shit to And we just basically sat around waiting for the film festival and all this shit to happen and just bullshit. And it was, he's a really cool guy (laughs) or was. Huh. That's cool, man. That's cool. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. I've, I've met and experienced a lot of interesting things in my you know, short tenure as a photojournalist, you know, I, I miss it dearly, but oh, well, enough about that. Mike, I think we have talked way too much, but uh, luckily our off topics always typically are now concise at the end of the pod. So uh, why don't you do your thing so you can go to bed? All right, Matt. So uh, make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook or Meta, whatever it's called now. And, uh, We'll catch you on the next pod. Um, Also, go out there, watch a movie or stream a movie. And uh, thanks for listening, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Real Film Nerds. Now, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Real Film Nerds. Now, go out and catch a movie. Matt Hinshaw is in studio with me this morning on Mad Jake 99.1 to talk about the movies. How you doing there, Maddie? I can't even see you, Lisa. You're camouflaged. <laughs> Where'd you go? <laughs>
<laughs> that was the whole idea there. That You're was trying the purpose. to hide from me? Pretty much. Got it. Pretty much. Most yeah. women do that. Yeah. Well, I could, yeah, never mind. Hey, <laughs> I saw a movie this weekend. I can't. couldn't wait to see this morning so I could tell you oh, I actually I would watched a movie. Know. I would love to know what movie. In the I, theaters or at home? At home, of course. Oh, jeez. Yeah. I saw Licorice Pizza. Oh, okay. How Did was it? Because I haven't seen it yet. No. Okay. I'll give it two thumbs down. Wow. <laughs> it was up for Best Picture, right? It was. It was nominated for Best Picture, yeah. I wonder what kind of reviews it got. Here, let's look it up. Okay. Real quick. Real quick. You're the Google master. Okay. Rotten Tomatoes, 90%. Wow. 67% of movie viewers, Google users, like the movie. 73 on IMDb. I just, yeah. I just. It was, Not a fan of. Well, I just I want you to watch it and then let me know what you okay. thought. Okay. What did you watch it on? What what? Did you what did you watch it on? Did you like Apple TV? Apple TV. It's yeah. on Apple TV. So did you yeah. rent it or yes. is it just on? Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I that was one of the ones where I wanted to see it in the theaters. It was here for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I just couldn't bring myself to go to the theaters because I know what it is. Right. It's like a love story in the Kinda. 70s or 80s. Kind of. Well, uh, that's how I <laughs> read it. Yeah. Right. But. Right. Right. A 15 year old boy and a 24 year old woman. <sighs> Ooh, geez. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. that's, uh, yeah. All right. I will, I'll check it out, but I'm not going to pay to rent it. Okay. So. Well, I didn't either. My sister did. But anyway, let's talk about the oh, movie okay. you saw. What was it? Everything, everywhere, all at once. Okay. What'd you think? I think I got that right. Did I get it right? Yeah. Everything, I I right. everywhere, all at once. Yep. What, 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 what'd you think? Contradictory to my hitch on what you will have on in a few minutes. Yeah. I loved it. You loved it. I thought it was fantastic, Tell me incredible, why. amazing. It's very unique. Okay. It's uh, goofy, uh, mind bending, sci fi to the max. Oh. Acting was phenomenal. Very, very good. Yeah. Uh, I I just loved it. It's very much my kind of film. Okay. And I think that's one of the reasons why my mom and dad and other generations have not been keen on it because okay. it's you got to really pay attention and wrap your head around because it circles around the multiverse, uh -huh. which we have coming up in a couple of weeks too, coincidentally, with the new Doctor Strange movie. Right. But this was a very interesting take on it. Okay, so this is a Marvel movie? No. Okay. This is not Just a Marvel movie. This is actually borderline independent. Mm. Um, the directors are not really well known. The actors, some of them are fairly well known. It was mid-budget. It wasn't high budget. It wasn't low okay. budget. That's why um, we didn't even get it on opening weekend. Mm -hmm. Right now, we already lost it out of one of the theaters. The other theater has it. Only has three showings on it, but the showing I went to which actually was last night. Oh, um, I went through the very last showing. I got close. Wow. Uh, it was, there was 35, 40 people yeah. in the small theater on a Sunday night. Okay. So, you know, and again, they were all my gener you know, younger, my yeah. generation and younger. Yes. And so I think that's very telling of what the film is versus, you know. Yeah. But I loved it. The actresses, actors all did very, very good. How many uh, reels are you going to give it? Like I said, I loved it. It's Five? Four, it, no, close. It's Ugh. four and a half. The only four reason I half. drop it that half, yeah. because I reserve my fives for something you just cannot miss. Right. That little half drop is because if you are of that older generation, you don't pay attention, you're right. not. You're just not going to like it. You're going right. to think it's garbage. Okay. And that's what my dad said. Okay. Very good. Let's give my Hinshaw a call. Coming up next on Magic. Good morning. Good morning, Ma Hinshaw on Magic 99.1. How you doing? Oh, doing fine. Good. Did you see everything everywhere all at once? <gasps> I'm proud of you for saying that name. I got the everything and everywhere backwards all the time. <laughs> well, I pulled it up on the internet, so I cheated a little bit. What did you think about the movie? Uh, I did not care for it. Yeah, that's what Matt said. He didn't think that you liked it. Tell me why. Uh, the kung fu parts were utterly too long, too much, just went on and on, and then I'd lose interest, and then I wouldn't know what alternate world we were in, alternate <laughs> universe, pardon me, and then I'd get confused, and then I'm like, well, I mean, it had some great points to it, you know, yeah. about relationships and stuff, but uh, no, I, not my cup of tea. And uh, you, if you're younger and you watch Rick and Morty and different stuff, they would get it, but I didn't. 
<laughs> I see. Okay. So, yeah, I'm probably more with you, Ma Hinshaw. I'm not really into the sci-fi multiverse um, type of movie, but Matt loved it. He gave it four and a half uh, reels. How many cookies are you going to give it? Uh, is there a minus cookie anywhere? <laughs> Zero. Oh, or That's minus. Painful. Okay. That's painful right there. Okay, so there was nothing you liked about it. How many snores did you give it? Oh, I fell asleep a couple of times. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> other people a lot more. <laughs> well, hop, yep, other people gotcha. Yeah, okay, very good. So, um... <laughs> You're going to give it. You're not going to recommend it. And I'm with you on that one. Thank you, Mahinsha. Not, maybe it's because uh, old persons, but whatever. No. And But go see. Everybody should take their grandkids to see the bad guys. Oh, the bad guys. You like that one. How many cookies you give oh, the bad guys? Yeah, it was really cute. I give that a four. A four. Mm-hmm. Very good. We love talking to you, Ma. Thanks so much. Thank you. You bet. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, Ma. So what are we going to review next week? See, I think she just didn't like the multiverse where they have hot dogs for fingers, and that's what. Well, made her... yeah, that would kind of throw me off a that little part bit was too. Matt. Absolutely hilarious, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> hilarious and ridiculous. Oh, funny. So next week we're going to watch a film that came out this past week. Yeah. Um, we're kind of playing catch up, I guess, in a way on new, the new releases. Okay. But it is the new Nicolas Cage movie. Oh yes. The unbearable weight of massive talent, which I'm... I understand a lot. Oh gosh, I, I I know you do. I know you do. I don't. <laughs> Uh, right. I don't, I'm missing that piece in my life. Sure. But I've honestly, I've been looking forward to this movie since I heard about it coming out because Nicolas Cage playing Nicolas Cage yeah. in a movie about Nicolas Cage movies. I mean, that's just, that's like multiverse right there in yeah. its own. Yeah. It, yeah. I think it'll be a lot Somebody of fun. called in this morning and said they absolutely loved it. Good. So yeah, I'll I'm be interested to, to see uh, what you think about it. Thank you so much, guys. Check out the podcast. It's called The Real Film Nerds. And you can catch him every Monday morning. Where? Maddie. On the Magnificent Magic 99.1. Magnificently Marvelous. Magnificently Marvelous Magnanimous. Magic Magic 99.1. Thank you. There.